Awesome. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for answering the poll. It's super helpful to know a lot of you are um, pretty new to portfolios. That's awesome. Um, so again, our webinar today is going to focus a little bit on um, how you sign up for an account, uh, create your class as a new teacher, but mostly uh, when you get to that portfolios tab, you know, what do you do? Um, how do you engage your students? And what does that look like for them um, and for parents? Okay. So this is about an hour. Um, we will have, I will try to have time at the end to answer Q&A. We have a lot of people on this webinar, which is awesome, but it just may, means that we may not get to everyone's question, but we will share with you how you can get answers to your questions at the end. And there's lots of ways that you um, can ask your questions and get answers, whether it be in our Facebook communities or our help desk or our YouTube tutorials, all that. Um, you will get um, in this webinar, or sorry, after the webinar, you will get a follow-up email, one from Zoom and one from us, and it will include the following, a recording of this webinar. So you got a jet early, no problem. You're getting a recording, you can watch it at your own pace, you can pause, all that jazz. Um, you're getting um, the presentation um, that I'm going to be showing you. I need to turn on my closed captions. There we go. Um, so Yes, closed captions is a feature in Google Slides. So I'll be using Google Slides to present, um, FYI. <clears throat> so you'll get a copy of the presentation, you'll get links to resources, and um, your link to a blank PD certificate, which you can then fill out, um, <clears throat> which is good for one hour of PD credit. Okay, awesome. So let's talk about getting connected. Um, so when you um, go, you can either sign up on the web or on the app. Um, and so we have different roles. School leader account is for, you know, those principals, directors, assistant principals, um, anyone in an administrative role. And then teachers, that's it, really anyone in your staff. So even your school nurse, um, counselor, um, PE teachers, music teachers, anyone can sign up, you know, for a teacher account. Um, if you already have a parent account, if you have a student at your school um, or a child that goes to um, a child whose teacher is using Class Dojo and you also want to use it as a teacher, then um, you can have two accounts. A lot of teachers use a personal email like Gmail or Yahoo to create their parent account and then they create a teacher account with their school email, with their school domain. And um, if you are logging in using the app, it's really easy to toggle back and forth between your parent and your teacher account. I can kind of show you what that looks like. Let's see. All right, I'm going to close this chat box. So as you can see in an account switcher right here in this window, this is my phone screen. Um, so you can see the uh, different accounts that I have in my account switcher and the top one's a parent and then there's my teacher and my child. So um, just going to the account switcher and tapping on my teacher, then I'm opening my teacher account. Um, I can go then, I wanna check out my child's um, latest stuff, I go there. Um, if you're doing that on the app, that, or sorry, if you're doing that on the web, you just have to log out of one account and log into the other. Um, so, teachers, verified teachers can basically do um, everything uh, in an account um, except school, except for uh, managing your directory and your school story, which is um, abilities of a school leader and a mentor that they can um, remove students from the directory, add students, graduate, merge students, things like that, directory management. Okay, so when you sign up, you'll be prompted to search for your school. Um, you start typing in your school name and you want to join the most accurate uh, listing for your school, meaning the name, the e or the address is correct. If you see there's two listings of your school, then um, you can, you know, let your mentor teacher know, your school leader. Um, you can write into us, um, our customer support team at hello at classdojo.com and let us know. 
and we can get those merged so that you make sure that you and all your colleagues are joining the same listing of your school. So schools don't have accounts per se. How ClassOjo works is schools are listings in our system and that includes the name of your school, the address, and um, possibly the domain. And then teachers and school leaders, staff create accounts, and they request to be associated uh, with a school listing. And when you are confirmed in your role at your school, then you are verified. So verified means your account um, is confirmed as a teacher in that role at your school. Um, so we, when you create an account, you have some welcome questions um, and you will um, receive a verification email, email, <laughs> lots of uh, <laughs> email. So yes, you get an email saying, is this email your email? And when you um, click on that link, then you verifying that email belongs to you. And if that email you're using is your school email and the domain matches the domain in our system for your school, then you can automatically get verified. And what does that mean? That means the little um, lock um, over on your teacher account. Let me see if I can. So right here, your school directory is unlocked. So you definitely want to get verified by before you start um, creating your actual classes that you are using. Feel free to play around when you create an account in your demo class. If you're not verified yet and you're waiting um, for your mentor teacher or your school leader to verify you, which I'll go over in a second, then this demo class we give to everyone. It shows up on your dashboard. It's got some, you know, celebrity students. And this is where you can play around with giving points, setting up skills, um, kind of playing around with the interface. <clears throat> and anything you do here is not going to be reflected in the directory. So you add fake students, those students aren't going to be added to your school directory and, and um, mess anything up, right? So you're able to play around with our toolkit and all of that. And then once you're verified, you can start creating a class. And you'll know that you're verified because this icon right here, your school directory will be unlocked and you'll be able to click into it and see the school story, which is the posts that go out to everyone, all teachers and parents connected to your school. And then the directory, which is where you see other teachers um, connected uh, with, to the same school and the students um, in your school, all right? So, woo. let's see what's gonna happen here. Natalie, can you make me host real quick? I'm sorry? Can you make me host real quick? Yes. Thanks. Cool, thank you. Okay, so um, who can verify you? Your mentor teacher can verify you. Um, and your verified school leader uh, connected to your school can verify you. If you request to join the school, they're gonna see that in their account and they just click approve and then you are approved. Um, so I believe here I'm in Caitlin's mentor teacher account and that is why she's able to see here in the directory when a teacher is uh, requesting to join our school Mojo Academy of Awesomeness. She can approve, okay? Um, you can also, if you're not sure who that mentor teacher is, um, it should say right here who it is, but if you maybe don't have a mentor or a school leader yet, then you can write into us, that customer support team, and um, provide us with um, information about you and your school and your role, and we can confirm your account, verify your account. Okay, so I'm going to move really quickly through this part, but again, you'll get these slides with all of these links, these blue links um, in the slide presentation link to help desk articles that give you step by step, um, very detailed, like one, two, three, four, do this. Here's a screenshot exactly what that should look like um, for adding class, setting up skills and all that. <clears throat> but again, to create a new class once you have logged in, um, if you're brand new, you're not gonna see any classes yet. 
So when you first create a teacher account, you're not automatically connected to all classes at your school. Um, you have to be invited to a, be a co-teacher in a class to see it pop up here on your dashboard. Um, and or you create a class. So when you create a class, you are by default the class owner, okay? Um, you're gonna select the grade for your class. Um, you're gonna so, you know, name your class really specific. Um, let's do Kinder, Mrs. McClure, 2021. All right, I want to share, you can select, do you want to share only positive points? Do you want to share all points with parents or no points with parents? Um, I'm going to share positive. I'm going to create my class. And now I'm ready to, because I'm verified, I'm ready to start adding students to my class. Now, if I have my roster, I can copy and paste my student list here or import from an Excel spreadsheet. Okay, um, if I start typing students that um, I know have previously been in my school, <clears throat> then when I start typing their name, because I'm verified, I see if that student is in the directory and I see the results, the search results from the directory. And I want to pull those students, if they already exist in the directory, I want to pull that version of the student into my class. I don't want to add a new version of the student. Um, this makes their experience with portfolios and their student account um, less really easy because they have one account and when the student logs in, they're going to see all of their classes in their one account. <clears throat> so, excuse me, I got a frog. So you're going to add students. If you have new students and maybe you start typing in, um, let's see, Kelly. Ripa. All right, she's not in my directory. She's a new student. So then when I add her, I'm automatically adding her to the directory. Okay. The awesome thing about pulling students that are already in your directory is if um, Kieran was in um, the, his class last year, if his parent was connected to Class Dojo at your school, then when I'm adding him to my class, I'm automatically connecting his parent too. So you can see at the top up here, I've got invite parents. So the next step and after you add your students is to invite your parents. Well, do you see how it says connected? Kieran McClure's parent, because he was already connected to the classes before. And when I added him from the directory, bam, his parents are already connected and they're automatically gonna start seeing my class story posts and everything in their account. Now, Parents have to be connected to at least one active class in your school to see the school story. So keep that in mind. If a parent is only connected, is only connected to classes that got archived, um, then those classes are like in hibernation, right? They're not being used and they're not active. So they are not gonna see your school story posts. Um, but once they are added to active, an active class, then those school story posts are going to start showing. So parents see class story posts for your specific class, school story posts, their child's points, only their child's points, only their child's work. So all the portfolio posts that their student submits, they see on their feed as well. And then they have messaging channels with you and any co-teacher you add to your class. So here, once um, I actually would recommend getting your co-teacher set up before inviting parents, um, I would make sure you've rostered your class, add your students. Then probably my next step would be to invite any co-teachers that I want to collaborate in my class. And you can do that by, um, you'll see, oh, here, okay, I got to add my school leader. My school leader wants to be a co-teacher in every class. So click invite. And do you see how it says connection pending? That means that the other, my principal is seeing that invitation in his or her account. Okay. If I was to type in, um, 
an email. Whoa, here we go. An email uh, to invite a teacher. And it says invitation sent. That's a red flag that I need to check with my colleague and make sure that I have entered the correct um, email for their account. I need to check and see what exact email I'm using for your Dojo account because this means that um, this email, there's not an account in our system under that email. So if you see connection pending, that's good. The invitation is showing in your colleagues, um, on your colleagues dashboard and they just need to accept and then you're connected to that class and then you'll see that class tile and be able to click into it and do anything that the class owner can do. So co-teachers can do all the same things in a class as the owner of the class, except add and remove other co-teachers and um, change the ownership. So transfer ownership of the class to another teacher. Only the class owner can do that. Otherwise, you're giving points, feedback, you have your own private messaging channels with other, um, with all the parents connected to the class. And um, you can also uh, see the reports and leave comments to students, and you can even change settings, add skills, all of that. So in a class, we've got um, your settings to enable or disable commenting for parents and for students. And then here under skills is where you're going to set up your skills. If you're doing school wide skills, your uh, school leader can set those up and then they can share that class with you. And then you can import from any class that's been shared with you skills from that class. So you don't have to make them all over again. So this is great. Um, and your point preference here can be changed as well at any time. All right. So um, connecting parents, I highly recommend this is, you wanna do this next. Um, before you go into portfolios, connect those parents, all right? Um, then sending those login information to parents, especially for remote, is super easy. So you can either download individual invites um, for parents. You can also do them in a um, few other languages. Um, and when you download that, you can, okay, got it. You can print these out. Um, you can screenshot them and send them to parents if you want. But if so, then um, when they go into their account and if they want to add a child, they're asked for this code, and when they tap add code, they can add that P code. Um, they can do it on the web as well, and then they're connected to your class. Go, all right, we're in, we're back at it. Now we're gonna go, here you can um, also share with all parents in the class, a class link. And when they paste this, um, they copy and paste the link or they type it into a browser, then they're asked um, what's the name of the child you want to be connected to? So I would, you know, type in um, Hannah McClure and then um, that request comes to you and it says Hannah McClure wants to join Hannah McClure in your class and you can then de um, deny that or approve that connection. And once they're approved, then you're going to see that connection appear here um, next to the student's name. You can also enter the parent's email or phone number to send an email invite or a text invite. Parents do still need to have to use an email to create their account. So just because you send a text invite doesn't mean that they can sign up with their phone number, but it does um, send them like a link in a text message that then they can tap on and it prompts them to either log into their existing account or create a parent account if they don't already have one and then they'll automatically um, be connected to your class. All right, so you've got your parents connected. Now, let's, let's go into another class actually. Let's go into Caitlin's beautiful portfolio class. Um, all right, so you're gonna click at the top where it says student login. <clears throat> so there's two options here. 
your in-person teaching, you want to click on classroom login. So you have three options if you're in person in class. You can post a QR code that is a class QR, a class QR. And that means that if you have one or two devices that your entire class is sharing, then <clears throat> they scan with the device, maybe an iPad, that QR that you've posted in the classroom, and they see a list of all the students in the class, they tap on their name, and that opens to their account. Um, so this is meant for in-class use, monitored by the teacher, so you can see, but it also gives um, the opportunity for students to go in and out, like to pass the iPad to the next student very quickly without having to enter login details. Um, if, you are, have, if you have a shared device in your class that is, um, doesn't have a camera, then the text code is this six um, character code um, that then your students can enter. And it is only active or like that, that code is good for 48 hours. Um, so that you can use a code, you know, for the whole day um, of, of this whole school day and it's not going to um, become invalid or anything. But it's the same idea of um, bringing up a class, your class list, and the students choose their name and then go into their account and then log out and then the next student goes into theirs. Um, if you are, for all you Chromebook users, then um, you probably, your students have um, Google accounts and they can sign in with their um, Google Gmail uh, account. And um, the first time you do that in person, um, you will see a list of the students and you want your student to make sure they select their name. For the first time they do that, they're connecting like their their listing in your class, they're connecting themselves in your class to their Gmail account. But then any consecutive time that they're logging in um, from then on, they don't see that step. They're automatically going to be logging into just their account. Okay, so then if you're remote and you're going to send login instructions home, this is why it's so easy if you have connected parents because you can just send them um, their login instructions and you can send it to all parents at one time. Um, I'm going to send them to um, this student that I created. So, so you can um, see this message that you're sending to the parent with a um, link that shows instructions and what the parent sees are these instructions. Lots of different ways that students can log in at home. They can, this shows through the account switcher. So I'm going to show you first way through their parent's account. And there's two ways within the parent's account. So many windows to move around. Okay, here we go. Um, all right, so as soon as you add the, the student to your class and then you connect the parent, the parent is gonna see um, the, their child in their account switcher. And just tapping on their child, um, the very first time, if the parent is creating an, a parent account for the very first time, then they'll have a pop-up that is asking the parent to give consent for their <clears throat> asking, do you give consent for your child to use um, a student account? And they would tap yes. Um, once they do that, the parent does that one time when they have a new parent account, then they don't need to do that again. So that's just the first time they give consent and now their child can toggle over to their account and they can tap on their class. All classes that they would be connected to would be right here. And then they're going to be able to um, see their posts and create new posts, okay. Um, also, if the parent is and then you can, parents can set that up so to go back into their parent account, it needs their um, fingerprint. 
so students can't just toggle back to their parent their parents account um, so they can tap on their child they can tap up here in the corner the QR oh see right here this is what parents will want to do is give permission to their child to use portfolios and then their child, you can use their tablet at home to scan um, this QR and log in on a de another device at home that they plan to use. So they can either toggle, um, if they only, if they're using their parents' phone, they can use their parents' phone to toggle to their account, or if they have their own tablet, um, or even um, if they're gonna log in on web or computer that has a camera, they can scan this QR code that the parent pulls up in their account and then um, log into just their account. It's not gonna show, there's no option to go into any other student's account, just their account, okay. So um, there also, when you send home these instructions, this QR gets sent to the parent as well. Um, if the parent pulls this up, they're gonna see the QR. There's lots of ways for them to easily get this individual QR. Individual QR meaning it's only opening that it's only open Gareth here in my example, Gareth's account. Um, and if they don't have a device with the camera, then the parent, all they need to do is copy and paste that link that you just sent them through your messages into their web browser. And now their child is set up to um, go ahead and do their work uh, on the web. Okay. All right. So, can't find my windows. Here we go. So, as you can see, when I sent those login instructions home, that shows up here in the messages to Gare's parent is the link. All right. Now, portfolios. So how do I get to portfolios? I click into my classroom, okay? Clicking into my classroom. It's gonna be here at the top, portfolios. This view of portfolios um, is not a, a view the same, you don't have the same a view in your account on the app. So to create um, an activity um, and to like assign a worksheet, you want to log in on the web. Um, but there are other things you can do on the app, which I will get into and show you. Okay, so just pulling that up on my phone screen. So here you can see um, all the posts that you that students have submitted. Um, this will all be blank for you for a new class, right? So actually, let me um, let's start in a in a class that's new, like the one I just made. So you can see, right? So it might look like this, um, and you can see you can change the student login method right here. And then you are, you can click on a student's name if you just want to add a portfolio post to a single student. Now say I just want to add a check in with Kelly and I can upload a photo or a file. Um, and then I can write a message um, with the post and then post it and that is only going to be shown to Kelly's parent um, or no sorry it's only going to show up on Kelly's student account. Um, if I want to do, do, do create an activity, I can here, by clicking create activity, put my title. I can choose if I want to assign it to the whole class or which students in the class I want to assign the worksheet or activity, whatever it is to. Well, need to do that. So like I said, it can be one student, it can be a few students. I'm going to assign to the whole class. And then um, right now you choose as the teacher how the, the student responds. If they're going to do a journal entry, 
if you want them to take a video, photo, a drawing, or you want them to fill out a worksheet. Okay, so I am going to do a worksheet to show, and I'm going to date. Again, the more specific you can be with your titles on these activities, I think the better. So, and you can give your instructions, fill out, blah, 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 blah. I'm not going to write them out, but you write out your instructions. If you have um, younger students that don't know how to read yet, um, you can record yourself. Hi. So you can record yourself here, click the camera, and um, give instructions to your students this way. Um, and these video instructions will come in with this. So I'm going to say, hello, everyone. I would love for you to fill out this emotional check-in for me and send it back. And I'd love to know how you're doing this week. Okay, I'm sure your instructions are going to be a lot better and more detailed than that. But then you continue and it's going to attach those video instructions to your uh, worksheets. Okay, so I'm going to click worksheet, upload. You can choose anything that is a PNG, a JPEG, or a PDF. Okay, those file types. So basically you can take um, you can pull up uh, worksheets that you find um, on the internet or a resource and you can screenshot it. Um, you can also just take a picture of it if it's a, a paper worksheet and then you know, put that on your computer. And going to assign to class. All right, so now I can see what I assigned and how many students, zero of two, have completed it. I have zero approved, zero pending approval, and I have two that need to be submitted. Okay, once I create an activity right here, I can also go back and edit the activity if I had, um, I realized I wanted to add another um, part to it or had a mistake. Um, I can archive the activity which is gonna um, put it, it'll put it down here so I can always bring it back, but it's gonna hide it from my students. Um, or it, I can delete it completely and it will be removed from the student account and from here, okay. Um, I wish I would have done that in the other, let's go back to the other class because that is, I have a student account on my phone pulled up. Okay, so um, yeah, because I have gear here that I've connected. Okay, so for Gareth, I'm going to create an activity for him. I'm going to find his name. Okay. Again, you've got your title. Um, you could say it's a scavenger hunt. Um, you could say find, you know, four items that represent your family values or your family, uh, whatever it is. You could do the record. I want him to respond with a video. I'm going to assign to him. Okay, so now if I was Gareth logging in on the app, where is it? There we go. Okay. Gareth's going to toggle over to his account. And going to try to make this so it doesn't close that. All right, so it says he has one activity to do. So as Gareth, I go into my account and I see, oh, to do, scavenger hunt. All right, let's do this. And it automatically is going to prompt him to 
um, use the tool that you assigned to that activity. So start. Now I can, whoop. Now, as you can see, I'm Gareth, I'm making my video for you, la 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 la. I found these items. Okay, I can also review the instructions. I can tap it. <clears throat> I can write what I want about it. Hope you like. Whoop, not life. <laughs> and send it back to you. And that shows me pending. <clears throat> I submitted it on Friday, September 4th, and I'm waiting for my teacher to approve it. Um, also below any posts, as a student, I'm going to see Mrs. Warren's um, class story posts. So as a teacher, you can <clears throat> post, let's go through here and catch up with me. right here. Um, lots of ideas in here for how to engage students, uh, the kind of um, ideas for posts and for activities. Right here um, that Caitlin has running records using manipulatives, um, writing instructions, worksheets, again, um, how you can upload different worksheets and how they can fill those out, which I kind of showed. But I wanna also point out that you can use the class story to post check-ins as she did here. I'm losing it. Um, as she did here. And then as a student, I can leave a comment on a post, right? Um, I can also whoop, tap on it to view it larger. Um, cool, send, all right. She posts an emotional check-in, says watch this video so I can tap it. It's gonna open that video for me and I can then comment. So they see all of the class story posts in their account as well. So she posted a video, watch this lesson, ways to make a dollar. And then she's saying, go post your own on your portfolio. So you can assign work to the whole class through your class story as well. Um, and then assign through your, through your portfolios. Um, and okay, so another thing, if you want to post individually to a student and you want to include a video, um, Got to go back to my phone screen and show you. So, um, like I showed you, you can post to individual portfolios, but only add a photo or a file on online. Um, so, if I'm a teacher, need that ID. All right, and I'm going into um, on your app. You can tap on the student. And you can um, write a post to them, a check-in. You can take a video of yourself and then just posting it to that student. Maybe you're asking them how, how they're doing specifically with um, a certain lesson or a certain concept. You can take a photo and show it to them. You can give feedback. So all in the app, by tapping on a student, you can give points uh, through your app, take a phone and post it to just that student, a video just to that student, or a message just to that student. Um, and you can even select maybe three students um, that are all struggling with a concept, or you wanna check in with them, um, maybe you haven't seen them do their running records or something you want to, you can do that, select which students. Lots and lots of possibilities here. Um, Caitlin talks about choice, has talked about choice boards. Um, so any kind of, um, 
I think I have it pulled. Do I have it pulled up here? Let's see. My desktop. I've got, yeah, this one I was working on. So um, she's got a link in this slide to different choice boards that are blank. And so I took one of those, took a screenshot, and I'm just editing it here in um, preview and I'm adding um, different activities and then um, filling in, uh, you know, go write about your experience or um, read a story about another culture that you're not familiar with. They can choose and then I'm gonna post it to my class story or I can assign it um, as a worksheet or no, sorry, um, assign it to my whole class um, or post it to the class story and then they can um, pick one and then choose how they want to respond, right? And they can go into their account as a student. I, Gareth, will see that on the class story and I will create new and I will decide, you know, what I want to do. Do I want to draw? Do I want to take a video to answer one of these? So with their drawing tool, this is also kind of like a whiteboard. So they are able to use all these tools. This is the same on the web as well. Um, they have all of the same tools and so they can use stickers, draw with different colors, all of that. Okay. Done. Then they get to this point, um, they can tap the record voice and they can explain their thinking with their drawing, um, write about it and submit it to you. All right. Um, we are here to help you in any way. If you have lots of questions still after this webinar, join our communities. Um, they are thriving and people are so active there. There are um, over 50,000, I think, in our teacher community and like 20,000 in our mentors. So um, definitely go on Facebook, join our communities. If you have any questions, you want ideas for um, how to specifically reach your age group, um, what kind of activities or assignments you could pose or where people are getting resources for worksheets and all that. Those are great questions for our Facebook communities. Oop, didn't mean to do that. Um, also, our YouTube channel has lots of video tutorials. And the great thing is uh, with those video tutorials on YouTube, you can also uh, watch them with closed captions. Um, so if you have parents that are predominantly Spanish speakers, you can share the parents overview uh, account overview one or how to log into a student account overview one that takes you step by step and they can put those um, subtitles or those closed captions on there. And um, we have lots of like basics and then every webinar we've done, we have recorded and we have um, put on our YouTube channel. So check it out. And then our help desk. Um, I'm sure there's a lot, a lot of questions. <laughs> yes, I see a lot of questions. And like, I guarantee you when I'm on these webinars answering your Q&A, 90% of them can be answered in our help desk. I'm just pulling the help desk article and passing it to the teacher to be like, this is the answer to your question. Um, also, you can write into us um, at hello at classsoldier.com. Um, our team is tiny, but we're mighty, and uh, we are working overtime, our support team, to answer all of your questions and help you troubleshoot any issues you have. Um, if the one thing I ask, if you write in, just be patient. We are going to get to you as fast as we can. Just don't create new tickets and write in over and over because that just like triples, quadruples our volume, and then that makes everyone get slower times. So write in and just be patient. We are getting to you. We're getting to most people within a day. So right now, um, <clears throat> we're trying our hardest to answer all of your questions. Um, all right. So I know that was a lot. I know that went really fast. 
Um, I want to check out the Q&A and see um, if I can answer some of your questions live here. Um, let me pull up this as well. The email, hello at classdojo.com. Yes. Um, okay. Would there be a way to add assignments to a student from an iPad or iPhone? Yes. And I believe I showed you that, but again, um, you're tapping on the, on the students and then you're able to um, post to their portfolio and that can be directions for an assignment. Um, you cannot submit or you cannot create an activity um, on, the, on the app. That's, that's a web only feature. Um, okay, we, the polling feature is a Zoom, not, um, not in Class Dojo. The webinar is re being recorded and it will be shared with you. You will get the presentation and the recording, all the things. Um, let's see. How can parents connect if they don't have an email? Um, there's not a way. So in order for a parent to connect to your class, they have to have a parent account. And to have, to sign up for a parent account, they need to have an email. So um, they would need to create an email um, in order to have a parent account. Yes. Um, let's see. So if a parent is not connected, but a student is setting up their account, um, they need parent permission. Yes, so um, you, if you don't connect parents, you as the teacher need to get parent consent in some other way. Um, some schools do have their own consent form that they have all parents sign at the beginning of the school year with technology and everything. And um, if you have a consent on file for students at your school, then when you go to um, select your, let's see, where's my account? When you first I think it's gonna ask me on this new, um, I'll show you on the new class I created. When I go to student login, see it will not let me even get to my at home login unless I as the teacher say, yes, I have parental consent. So I know that they have given parental consent either through some digital form um, or through a form that the school had parents do. Um, and so once you know you have that, we have an example um, parent consent form on our help desk. You can find it under um, our, any of the portfolio, um, po or portfolio articles at our help desk and our privacy center as well. And so you can use that if you don't have one, but um, you want to make sure you get parent consent that students can use accounts and once you do, you would say, uh, I agree, I know that I have gotten parent consent, and then you have access to those at home um, logins to share with, uh, with families. Okay. Um, how do I import feedback to other classes? Um, I'm not sure what you mean, but once you give points and feedback. How to import feedback? Yeah, do you wanna answer that one? Yeah, so if you have uh, more than one class on your launch pad, um, that means you have access to both those classes. So when you go into your class, um, go to skills right there. And on the top right there, it says import from. And then I can import whatever skills I had created in a previous class. Um, actually, those are my archive classes too, so they don't even need to be unarchived. It can be any class you've ever created. You could pull in those skills. So, yes, yeah. <laughs> um, how can I remove staff no longer working with me? Um, that is something a mentor in a school or a school leader can do uh, within the directory. And. We have a help desk article on that. Um, it's gonna be in the directory and you're able to um, click on a teacher if they left and remove them from your school. And that uh, 
makes it so that they don't have access to your director anymore, um, but they still have access to any of their classes. So if they are leaving, um, a good rule of thumb is to have them transfer ownership of their classes um, to you, the school leader, or to the mentor, or to the teacher taking over the class uh, before they leave your school, before they like leave your school in their account um, and, and, and join their new school with their class digital account. Okay. Um, trying to see what a lot of these questions are. We have just a few more minutes. Um, I'm a parent and when I use my computer to log in, I do not see portfolio tab. That is because you are a parent. So if you are a parent, let's see, do I still have it? Oh, no. Yeah, okay. So this is a parent account. Parents see the student they're connected to. They click on that student. They're gonna see their points, um, but their home screen is their story feed. And this includes in this story feed it, all together, they'll see the class story posts, they'll see school story posts, and their child's portfolio posts. So um, they, if you're in a student, or sorry, in a parent account, you don't have a portfolio tab where you create posts or submit posts. You go into your child's account um, and then they help their child from the, the student account to create that work and create those posts and submit it to their teacher. And then once it's been approved by the teacher, then the parent will see it in their feed, but not until a post has been approved by the teacher. Um, can I upload more than one file per post? Not yet. Uh, right now you can only select one file or one photo um, for a post, but we hear you. It's a very uh, popular re request and we understand why. Um, you can post links to YouTube, yes, on your class story. Um, think of that, that class story as your home base. So if you are using um, any other platform or site, then you can always link to um, other sites, link to other videos, um, link to your Google Classroom, whatever else you're using here in your class story, because when you post your class story, it automatically sends a notification um, to your parents that you've added a new story post. And then um, parents are, you're able to see which parents and students have seen the post, which is really helpful information, right? When you're sharing a very important link or information. So um, that's awesome. And then I didn't even talk about our translation feature, which is amazing. So if your um, parent is, let's say, a Spanish uh, speaker, and then they set their account language up in their account settings, in their account, they set it to Spanish. And if our system recognizes that your uh, account language is English and theirs is Spanish, then it'll automatically show the parent this translate button. And when they go and they go to the classroom and see your post, they're gonna click translate and then it's gonna translate it to their language. And then you can see it's been translated. Same with messages. Um, they're able to translate with a click of a button, any messages that you send them. Um, when it comes to PDFs, you can upload PDFs. So when it comes to class story posts, you can upload now a video, a photo, a file, which can be a, um, a Word doc um, or a PDF. You can click record and you can record a video of yourself and immediately submit it um, to the class story for all your students to see. Um, and then you can also post a class event, which is awesome. And you can decide um, the, the notifications you want your parents to receive. So if you want them to get notified a day before the event or an hour before the event, um, they'll get a push or an email to let them know um, that this you know, Zoom meeting is coming up and what they need to do to prepare for it. Um, and any video you do is eight minutes max. So eight minute is the video max time. Um, same with the voice recording for students, it's eight minutes. And file size, 
75 megabytes. So if your file is 75 megabytes or smaller, then it can be uploaded to your school story or to your class story. All right. Um, it's 10.01. You guys have been amazing. Um, thank you so much for your time. I know that there's still a lot of questions. Hopefully I answered most of these during the presentation. I think when you get these slides in our follow-up email, um, they're gonna answer all of your questions. And if they don't, then write into us at hello at classdojo.com and let us know um, what, what your questions are. So thank you all so, so much. Have a wonderful rest of your Friday and, and weekend. Um, it's my son's seventh birthday. So we're gonna go celebrate that. And um, you have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much. Uh, we appreciate everything that you do. I know it's a crazy time, but here at Class Dojo, we value educators so, so much. And we are here to support you and to give you whatever you need to make this a successful back to school season. Thank you, everyone. Bye.